I stopped in to check out the Hubbard Museum of the American West and they're closed on Wednesdays. That's how my luck runs. We check out all this, the uh, horse sculpture uh, it's around the outside. It's all pretty impressive. So let's go see. Uh, the Appaloosa. This was my late wife's favorite horse. So I just crested Apache Summit, which is like over 7,500 uh, feet of elevation. I'm in the homeland of the Apache. Uh, I don't know why it surprises me, but as warm as it is out right now, uh, I'm seeing snow uh, in the southern faces, uh, up on the higher, a little bit higher elevations. But then again, hey, 7,500 feet. I would expect to see snow on it when it gets a little colder. Let's see if I can show you some here. I don't know if that's snow, but we're headed towards it. So maybe you're asking yourself, why am I mentioning snow? Well, part of the reason I'm on this trip is to run away from snow. Uh, so, oh well. Not in it. It's over there. Okay, so mystery solved. Um, wasn't snow. It's White Sand. This is the uh, White Sands National Monument. I forgot it was over here. And um, White Sands Missile Range is over that way somewhere. Um, don't think there's going to be any missiles fired today, but... Um, drive around the loop road, uh, or the road back in. Um, again, my senior pass, I got in for free, but I think it's, it's like $5 for a vehicle. Um, they do have some backcountry trails back in here to hike in. Um, I don't have much details on that, but scattered out all through the park along the road, there's um, uh, restrooms and um, there's like this picnic area. So you got these little uh, sun shaded picnic tables with a little grill. So um, there's quite a few in this area. There's dumpsters. Um, no overnight parking, more is the, you know, more is the pity, but, uh, so I'm going to go find a, a different spot and we'll take a, a walk up into the dunes a little bit. Got to figure out which hat I need to wear. So, um, why white? It's, uh, gypsum. Is real fine. Um, I think it's the uh, largest gypsum uh, desert sand dunes in the world. Um, one thing different about this than uh, a lot of other things, a lot of other beaches, is it's cool. Um, I mean, the sun's beating down and uh, air is warm, but the uh, because it's white, it reflects a lot of the heat, and it's got um, uh, by the way, that is snow way up there. So, um, if you ever head this way, 
bring a, a toboggan or a disc or, you know, snow toys because you are allowed to um, slide on these. You're supposed to slide away from the road, but um, on this side, well, people walked over there and over there. Um, the road being this way. The predominant wind is coming this way, so the sharpest part, side of the dune is on the other side. And um, it just happens. Well, down here, there's all kinds of critter tracks. Um, supposed to keep uh, your pets in the vehicles. Uh, this is some sort of deer track. We got a canine track here. Um, hopefully, people kept their dogs in the car. Um, so, good I good possibility that would be a coyote. Um, they're a little hard to spot. A little like smaller wildlife, for the simple reason that they've adapted to very light colorations and. Uh, So, chances of me seeing one, pretty rare. So, how did this form is, uh, this whole area used to be underneath uh, uh, inland sea, which left a lot of um, gypsum deposits. And um, when that sea dried up, um, they left there, but then the glaciers up in the mountains, uh, when they melted, they helped dissolve that big, uh, thick one into little, and it dried up into little granules um, off Lake Lazaro, which is over that way. I may not be pronouncing that correct. Um, but that's where um, it was basically beaten into sand and blew this way from the prevailing winds. Uh, I mentioned the the uh, missile testing range, it completely surrounds this. And about once or twice a week, um, they have missile tests. And they close the park, close uh, Route 70 that runs by here for one or two hours, just for uh, public safety. So, oh, speaking of testing, about 100 miles north of here, which I think is that way, is where they tested the, uh, the first atomic bomb. So, you can see by the banks that these, this road is, uh, they scrape it and um, he said one guy, a 20 year veteran said that he worked 40 hours a week and couldn't keep up. Uh, just wasn't enough time to do all the roads. The um, wind coming through, we get a high wind today, it's pretty calm. We get a high wind, it'll pick up this dust, it could blow it 100 miles. Um, and within a couple hours, the road could disappear. So if the wind was to come up, I'd be headed out. Um, so. But even if you're going out hiking in here, man, bring a good compass. You can see the peaks, know how to read a topo map, and uh, you know, benchmark along the way. If you got GPS, again, don't depend on it. Your batteries will go dead just when the wind comes up. So learn to read a topo. Take a sight on the big peak over there, the one with the snow on it. Peak over here, pretty, pretty. Consistent. I mean, between those two peaks and uh, taking bearings, I could pretty much tell where I am in this place. Good skill to have. Well, that's a little thing about the White Sands uh, National Monument. And keep moving on, see where I get to next. All right. See you later, YouTube. Hi, I'm Steve. This is my furry overlord, Cammy, and uh, we're traveling around the country, checking out things, uh, looking for those places that 
most people just sort of miss or never heard of. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, tell your friends and neighbors about it. And uh, if you want to make a contribution, there's a button up there on my homepage. And uh, for every, as long as they last, every $5 you uh, send, I'll send you a couple of stickers. So...